Okay, so continuing with number 17, 18, 19, and 20, I'm going to do those as a little group because they kind of have related um, applications. So if I'm looking at a question such as this one, you're looking at the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left. And so the function given to us is x plus 2 over 2. And so this is as simple as plug in the 3 plus 2 over 2, and your limit is 5 over 2. Graphically, if you were to throw this into the calculator, clear this out, and we're going to do uh, parentheses x plus 2, and we're going to divide by 2. And when we go ahead and we hit graph, there's our graph. I might need to do a zoom standard, so bear with. Zoom standard, there you go. See a little bit clearer picture there. Um, you can also um, go to second graph to get the table. And as you know, 5 over 2 is going to give us uh, 2.5. And so at 3, 2.5, this is going to be a continuous point for us, despite um, the fact that we have x plus 2 over 2. And you know that because 2 is a constant anyway, so it wouldn't make a difference. All right, but let's look at number 18. Number 18 has got a lot of, a lot of parts to it, so let's see here. So this says uh, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, we're given the function f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 6, so we'll plug it in. So you get 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 6. This gives you 9 minus 12 plus 6. And so our limit for this part of the function is 3. Okay, I want you to keep this in mind. Now we look at the second part here where we're looking at the function um, which is negative x squared plus 4x minus 2 which where the limit is coming from the right so in this case we're still plugging in 3 so you have the negative 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus 2 this ends up giving you negative 9 plus 12 minus 2 and final answer of 1 so to answer this question you would say in this case since one of the so as these one-sided limits disagree, this limit as x approaches 3 does not exist. So writing it out, um, one-sided limits disagree. And what that means is, okay, one-sided as in this is coming from the left over here. So this one is coming from the left, and remember we got, for this one we got positive 3, and this one's coming from the right, and if you recall for this one we got positive 1. So that's why one-sided limits refers to these two parts, and that they disagree refers to the fact that you get different values when you plug in their related values, or the, the as x approaches 3 in this case. Okay, <clears throat> so we would answer the limit as x approaches 3 for our function, given function f of x, does not exist. Does not exist. Okay? Alright, let's take a look at number 19. Number 19, we're going to look at it graphically um, because we're let's see here, we're looking at this, since we're looking at it as x approaches pi, we're then going to look at it from x approaches pi from the left, and as x approaches pi from the right. And so you're going to find that um, this does not exist. So let's take a look at it graphically and make some sense out of it. You hear one of my dogs in the background going crazy. I don't know what she's doing, but she's driving me crazy. Okay, so 
<laughs> one divided by tan gives us cotan. And we're going to substitute in second pi. I'm going to go ahead and graph that. I'm getting nothing but a bunch of errors. Do you notice that? <coughs> Okay, so let's do second trace. <coughs> let's do second trace value. <coughs> and I'll go ahead and put in pi. You see how you get an error? Okay. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to actually change that to an X. Just exploring the graph. There's your graph. So changing it to the X will actually give you the graph. So second trace, go back to value. Let's go ahead and put in second pi. And again, what do you notice? You get nothing. So in this case, we know that the limit of cotan x does not exist. And you know that because regardless of whether I'm coming from the left or, or the right, so disregarding which way I'm, you know, which approach I'm coming through, you would say this does not exist. And you can tell because there's no continuity there. Okay, so, uh, number 20, very similar in this one. So we're looking at pi over 2, and we're looking at, again, we're going to look at it from x approaching pi over 2 from the right, and x approaching pi over 2 from the left. So we'll grab the calculator again. Okay, so we're going to clear this out. <coughs> and so we're going to do 1 divide cos oops. 1 divide cosine hence gives give a secant and we're going to graph. Okay, once you do that, you just simply go second trace of value. And we're going to go and we're going to hit second pi divide 2. Remember, pi over 2 is a 90 degree. And you'll notice that, see how this is dropping infinitely and then it increases infinitely? So it's always going to skip in that particular value. So in this case, you would argue that this does not exist. does not exist because neither of these two, these do not exist as well. And remember, when you look at a graph, if you see that the value is decreasing continuously and it doesn't look like it's going to come back up or if it's going to have any connection to the next um, juncture, then you can tell that it is obviously a limit that doesn't exist. Okay, the next set of questions I want to look at are questions that have discontinuity. I'm going to do those prior to doing um, 21 to 20, 21 to 28. So I'm going to start with discontinuities next, and then I'll go back and do a few of the others from uh, 21 on.